Welcome back to Boiler House Garage and part 5 of my testing for ethanol content in modern fuels. In this video we're doing a control test by using some E10 Shell Fuel Save Petrol. This is just to get an idea of what we're looking for when it comes to finding the ethanol and how it appears in the measuring cylinders. Uh, as both the Shell and SO Super Unleaded's we've tested so far are ethanol free. We will be using 300 millilitres of water mixed with 700 millilitres of the test petrol, a method to detect ethanol which is explained in better detail in part 3 of this series. I will also be going back to my earlier uh, water line on a glass jar, uh, or in this case a bottle, as I've had a few people comment on how I need to be shaking up the mixture and leave it for longer than I have been. So I will pour the petrol carefully on top of this water. Uh, as not to mix it with my pour free method for comparison and then leave a little ream at the top so it can be vigorously shaken together and we can see just how quickly the separation happens compared with pouring the water on top of the petrol in the measuring cylinders which mixes as it moves through the petrol uh, to sit at the bottom with no shaking or much in the way of stirring. So let's make sure we give this a proper shake up. Hmm, this technique feels oddly familiar. Now this is properly mixed, you cannot see any separation of the petrol and water, but it's immediately producing a froth and in less than a minute you can see the instant results of the water line, now higher than it was because the ethanol has moved into it. There isn't as much here as I thought, so perhaps there's quite a bit more to come out of the petrol. The petrol isn't as translucent as it was before, so perhaps this is the remaining suspended water and ethanol and needs some time to fully separate. But now for my default test of pouring the water through the petrol. You may have noticed the E10 petrol is somewhat yellower than the ethanol free petrols we tested before. Now let's see if we get a near instant result from this method where the mixture hasn't been shaped. And we do. The separation line is around 340 millilitres. I say around as there is a discrepancy in these blue printed measurements and the embossed ones on the rear of the cylinder, which is what I'm going by to pull the levels. 335 millilitres is what we'd expect uh, for E5 petrol, the extra 35 millilitres being half of 70 which is the 10% of 700 millilitres that you'd expect to find in E10, 10% ethanol. On the back, it may not show on camera, but the line is around 330 millilitres, plus this table isn't completely level, uh, but it is adequate for the purposes of detecting the difference of 5 and 10%. Something else which may not come over on camera is this frothy separation line that we didn't get on the ethanol-free petrols. These tubes are semi-opaque, so let's take another look at the glass bottle to, so we can see if there's any more clarity to the petrol and I'll, I'll mix it again to see if the froth will be more apparent through the clear glass. That still looks a little cloudy in here, I don't know if any more of this will come into the sort of water mix here and raise the line a little. But first we'll mix it up again, uh, just to see how this frothy line looks. And there we go, it's much easier to see here. Looks like the head on a cheap lager. So now what we'll do is we'll leave this glass bottle and our measuring cylinder, which has so far not changed above its E5 line, uh, for an hour each. And we'll come back to the video after this. Today's video is brought to you by Nexo. Nexo is the world's most advanced digital assets institution, offering instant loans, daily earnings on assets and a zero fees cryptocurrency exchange. 
Nexo gives digital asset holders the best of both worlds, instant access to cash and high yielding daily compounding interest on your idle funds, including US dollars, euros and pound sterling, and digital assets including Bitcoin, Ethereum and many more. Boiler House Garage accepts various cryptocurrencies for its services and I personally hold my entire life savings on the Nexo platform in both pound sterling of which I earn 10% APY and various cryptos of which earn upwards of 6% APY and as high as 17% for limited periods. Considerably better than the 0.01% I was getting from my high street bank. Nexo carries $375 million in insurance protections for assets held on the platform while they are stored in military grade class 3 vaults still allowing for instant access to your funds. For a limited time only, click the referral link in the description below to receive $25 worth of Bitcoin when you deposit $100 worth of any asset supported by the platform. Hurry as this promotion ends on December the 31st. Now back to the video. So coming back an hour later, the clarity of the petrol is mostly unchanged, maybe slightly clearer, but it's hard to tell on the uh, plastic cylinder as it's uh, opaque. Uh, but the line is still at 340, uh, which is surprising because 335 milliliters is E5, and this is supposed to be E10 petrol. What I'm going to do on this glass cylinder, uh, glass bottle, sorry, is uh, mark a line where it is now. So it was the initial water line, and then one hour later after mixing, and then I'm going to do an overnight uh, test, as it were, just to see if this line raises above the one hour, which would mean this cloudy murky petrol uh, will translate to more water and ethanol mix. Although it's unsurprising that E10 petrol does contain ethanol, what is surprising is the fact that this is E5 still because at 335 milliliters is indicative of E5, E10 would be 370 milliliters. However the fuel suppliers are allowed to sell this until December. Now it's the next day, let's see how our overnight glass bottle test has done. It appears that the separation line is no higher than it was after leaving it for an hour. In fact it actually looks lower but this is likely down to it stabilising and leaving a thinner more definitive line than the foggy one I've sort of crudely traced with a sharpie um, when there was still some settling going on. However this does conclude that the results we see after an hour are more than sufficient for our purposes which is simply to see that a certain petrol is either ethanol free or contains a particular amount of it which we can judge as E5 or E10. Remember also that E5 and 10 labels mean anywhere up to that respective percentage of ethanol and not necessarily that amount specifically. Now that I've wiped off most of the condensation, holding it up to this white background we can see if the petrol's a little bit more transparent and closer to how it was at the start of the test. I'm not sure if the fuel is coloured yellow as an identifier or, or if the yellow tint is caused by the ethanol uh, because it's made from corn uh, ethanol or perhaps it's a combination of both. In conclusion we've seen how both the mixing methods of pouring water through petrol in a cylinder is as valid to achieving visible results as the shaking it together. The former method I've adopted as the test kits you can buy work on this principle using a much smaller test tube and the latter tends to be favoured by people actively removing the ethanol from petrol to use in classic cars, bikes and two-stroke equipment and it's understandable that they leave this to settle for longer given the volumes they do this in. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified of the next fuels being tested. Next I'll be revisiting SO Synergy post the E10 mandate and we'll be seeing if Texaco Supreme 97 is currently ethanol free or E5. Following that I'll be doing either Tesco Exelum or BP Ultimate. Thanks very much for watching.